Hey guys, it's JM. I finally got my hands on an AMD Threadripper system. One of my friends who was done plotting wanted to ask me if I wanted to buy his system from him, so I sent him some Chia, and here we are with a Threadripper 3970X 32 core system. So uh, obviously I worked at Intel, so I'm very familiar with Intel CPUs, but I wanted to have uh, some of the higher end AMD stuff uh, around at home so I could benchmark with some of the latest uh, SSDs and plotting tools, of course. Uh, and so one of the thing that we're going to run today is uh, we're going to run Plotman with Mad Max on this AMD Threadripper system. But I just got this thing set up uh, this weekend. Let me show you guys kind of what I did to poke around at it. Um, and I'll, I'll go through kind of the BIOS updates that I did. Uh, just very few settings to get it a stable overclock. Um, and so what I'm using is this TRX 40 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. It's probably not the highest end Threadripper third, third board. Um, the BIOS is not very great, but uh, it's got a few settings in there. Um, we got the Threadripper 3970X, 32 core CPU. It has a Noctua uh, air cooler on there. So it's no, no high end like liquid cooling or anything. Uh, and it's got 120 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 uh, with XMP enabled. So uh, that was the first thing I did. Now I'm gonna benchmark it using just one drive at a time, but first I'm gonna do the Optane Gen 4 drive, the 1500X. Um, if you guys have seen the leaderboards, everybody knows that this is kind of my favorite SSD pick for plotting. It's just unbeatable. It has like DRAM-like performance with Mad Max, um, 100 drive rights per day endurance. Uh, it's just a beast. And you know, there's no, you don't have to worry about trim or anything because it's the Optane 3D Crosspoint Media and uh, it's just right in place. So very easy to work with. Um, so they just went back on sale at Newegg if you wanted to try to pick one up. Um, and then of course the D7 P5510, this is our Gen 4 drive. In this case, I'm actually just going to use it in my first benchmark to kind of uh, stage the plots to after they're done so I can run a kind of longer test with Mad Max. Um, generally, you don't need to run too long a test to tune and figure out the performance, but you know, you want to run it for a couple runs and get it stable to where you have some very reputable times. Um, so I just installed Chia on this guy, and the first thing I'm going to do is install Plotman. And so just pip install, force reinstall and the Plotman repo, um, that's it. And then we're gonna do a config generate. And uh, now we have a default Plotman. Oh, just to poke around at the system, let me clear this real quick. Uh, sudo DMI decode, you can see, um, you do a type one, this will give you the uh, motherboard name. I think type two also gives you the motherboard name with the manufacturer. Sometimes if the motherboard is different than the system name, you can see some different information there. If you wanted to see some information about the memory, you could do a DMI decode type 17. You can see this is this 3200, or sorry, 3600 megatransfer per second uh, DDR4. Um, and I believe it reports at 1.2 volts, but I believe the XMP has it running higher than that. So, um, and so this is four modules of 32 gigabytes each. And then of course, LS CPU, we can look at the, AMD Threadripper 3970X, 32 core. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. Okay, so uh, we installed Plotman and um, I basically just have two drives. The two drives I'm showing you here are, are attached. I have some other um, M.2s in the system as a boot, but uh, that's mounted as my root. Um, and okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, nano the dot config Plotman, Plotman.yaml. And um, I have, you know, put your plot logs wherever you want. I just have a folder called Chia Logs. I think that's easy. Um, we don't need the archiving. Um, that's that's for if you want to, of course, um, you know, copy over the network rsync D using your, have if you're archiving from your plotter to your farmer. Uh, in this case, I'm just messing around, so I don't need anything like that. Uh, my temp, I just have one temp right now. And this is going to be, uh, my 5800X, and you, we can show, I'll try this again in a sec with the um, RAM disk, um, just to, to test one versus the other. I wanna have some data with both uh, to see which is better. I think the RAM disk is obviously gonna do about the same, but use less SSD writes, which is good. Uh, that's my hypothesis, at least for this, this system. Um, and so I'm gonna leave temp two off for now, but ev essentially, eventually we'll put that to the RAM disk. Uh, and then destination drive, I think I mentioned, I'm just gonna run this to my 5510 uh, for right now. Uh, all right, so for archiving, you know, we don't need this right now. 
So we are going to comment this guy out and scheduling. So the cool thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try this. Um, instead of time-based scheduling, um, what, what um, Kyle has been doing, he's uh, one of the authors of Plotman now maintaining it. Um, he's been doing this just staggering after temp phase one for Mad Max, and it seems to work pretty good. Uh, and then so for that, you just basically, we're going to try to, this is an 800 gigabyte drive, so we're going to run two instances of Mad Max to it. Global max jobs, we'll just say two for now, and then zero stagger, because we're going to stagger off the phase. Pulling time at 20 seconds is perfectly fine. Uh, the temp overrides, we are just using one temp, so we do not need any of this crap. So I'm just going to comment it all out. Um, if you were to use multiple temps at a different settings, you might want to do some stuff there. Okay, so this is where we change um, plotting. We're going to change it from Chia to Mad Max. And for Mad Max here, we're going to change the executable to where I have it, which is just the standard. Uh, it goes Chia plotter slash build after you build it. Um, if you guys need me to do another tutorial on how to build Mad Max, um, you, you can certainly do that. Uh, and so this is a 32 core system. So I'm just going to start with 32 to start and see in 512 buckets because that's generally best on this Optane drive and, and um, with RAM disk. So we'll start with 512. We can kind of tune it and play around with it and see how it does. Um, and then uh, I always forget this. Um, <laughs> yeah, you definitely need to put in your keys or else it won't start. So I'm just, uh, this is my system that I have to play around with. Um, home my small farm that I just use as my kind of test farm so I'm gonna copy my pool address and I'm actually going to use a contract address here because these are gonna be portable plots and so we pop that in here and control plus O to save okay so uh, what I do and so if you guys look um, well I'll show you this in a sec so we're going to start a screen called plot we're going to activate chia and going to plotman interactive let's see if i messed something up oh gosh uh chia plotter build slash chia plot um let's see if i i always mess something up so oh yeah i know what i did <laughs> he, he, he. It's not there. It's at slash home slash JM slash Chia Plotter. So screen dash R. Now we'll run it. Yay. Okay. So it kicked off the first plot. And I'm going to con hit control A and then D. It escapes out of that screen. And if I want to go back, screen dash R. You can see I can just hit control A, D and get back out of that screen. Um, I can hit Duff, that gives me my temp usage. Um, Duff is just basically a DF on steroids. It gives you a lot more information. Uh, and we're going to look at HTOP, and we're going to see basically quite a bit of activity. So the plotting has started. Um, we're going to do his check back here in like an hour and see how the plotting times are looking um, after it does this. And then... It's very easy to tune from here. So you just change the R value, you change the stagger, you change the number of uh, processes and just until you get max output. It shouldn't be hard on a system like this. Generally two is probably gonna be the best. Um, you know, it, three might be better. Uh, I can try that out, but um, yeah, I'll see. Uh, I did a quick benchmark on the system and I think with the overclock I have, I'm gonna get about 12 TIB a day. So we'll see uh, if I can get a little bit higher. So. Um, Obviously, one of the things I do, and you guys have seen this, is from my other, um, uh, you know, my other videos. I've done uh, cap proc slash CPU info grep megahertz just to look at the frequencies. You can see it's boosting up to that 4.3 gigahertz that I set it to. And if you want, I can um, watch this. This is a pretty bare bones uh, with an N01. And yeah, you can see the cores are ramping up very, very nicely. Um, now, one of the things I was concerned about, this, this is just an air cooler, was the temperatures. So um, so for um, AMD, you know, surprisingly, the LM sensor just doesn't work out of the box. You have to install this thing called uh, Zen Power. 
And once you install ZenPower, it, you can add the device in sensors, LM sensors. Um, you basically add the module and you, just, you can just go to the ZenPower GitHub and follow the instructions there, but I can do another video on that. Uh, I didn't take me too long to figure out, but once you do that, then you can see the sensors here. It's reporting TDI and the CCD one, three, five, seven, whatever, all these temperatures here. Uh, so now my CPU is at 77.4, um, you know, pretty, pretty high CPU utilization. So, uh, hopefully it doesn't get over 80. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to watch it with this 4.3 gigahertz overclock. It could get a little dicey, uh, and we'll go from there. So, all right, we'll check back here in a few minutes. All right, here are the BIOS settings I have currently. If you go to system info, you'll see this is the TRX. 40 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. I have a Threadripper 3970X 32 core with 128 gigabytes of DDR4. So really the only thing I did uh, was basically kept all this stuff the same. I changed the uh, XMP to uh, Profile 1, which changed it to 3600. Uh, this obviously the um, plotting process is very memory intensive and memory bandwidth intensive, so having the extra memory speed helps quite a bit, especially in these high count CPUs. Um, I didn't change anything else there. Uh, the only other thing I did was go into uh, AMD overclocking and went to manual CPU overclocking and I set it to 1.35 volts, so that's uh, 1350 millivolts, and then I set it to 4200 uh, for CPU frequency. Now, uh, the overclocking works quite a bit differently on AMD versus Intel. Um, but this basically will, the, the by it'll report this to the OS, um, and then it will ramp up the power basically to try to hit these targets per core. So, um, we can try maybe something I, I've 4,200 is stable. I'm going to try something. I'm going to try 4,300 and see if we can get a stable overclock on this, um, and, and go from there. So that's it. Uh, and then I just turn off the CSM sport because that's garbage. Um, and not needed. So, all right. So exit and save. That's it. All right. I let this guy run for about an hour and we're going to check out the results. Uh, we're in the chia logs folder. You can see Plotman just dumps the output here. Um, if we do a cat of all the logs and we prep for total plot creation time, we'll see up oh, cat, cat bomb in the video. Um, You'll see the uh, very first one and the very last one uh, completed much faster. Obviously, when you're running two in parallel, um, when you turn off Plotman and it's running the very last one and it's not starting any additional ones, there's not going to be any other background activity. So um, when I run a single plot on this machine um, with nothing else, you know, I get a little bit faster than that. So uh, for the last one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a um grep for the total output and we're just going to take the ones that completed in the last hour so the middle ones and we're going to basically output the system oh cat is still still here bye bye cat uh we are going to take the ones of the last hour and then we're going to run through this command this is going to give us the average time and the average tib a day uh, this is actually a very similar formula that i use in the community spreadsheet um, so what we're going to do is take that 1354.6 uh, and we're going to pop it into that spreadsheet. This is the community spreadsheet. So I just input this brand new system in here. And you can see um, 1355, that gives us an average of 22.6 minute plot time. And with two parallel plots, an average of 12.62 TIB a day. Uh, now that is very, very similar to... Um, what our output here, 12.63, 12.62. It's basically the same formula. Um, you're basically just figuring out, okay, if, if you can write two plots that are 101.3 GIB in 22 minutes, you know, then you basically say, how many of those can you make in a day? And then you add up the, the sum of all the TIB. And this is the most important metric. A lot of people talk about plots per day, but I, you know, I just get a little bit confused sometimes on plots per day versus TIB per day. I like, I happen to like TIB per day. So whatever, whatever you pick. Um, and so this is very good. If we look at doing the same one, but uh, instead of total, we'll grab phase one. We can kind of look at our phase one times. Um, so this is really, really fast machine. Um, 
I've been super impressed. Now, in the in here, I've put in thirty six hundred dollars. Um, if in this configuration I have, obviously with the two expensive drives, that's much higher than that. Um, the Optane drive is going for about two thousand dollars on Newegg right now, the eight hundred gigabyte. Uh, so I bought the rest of the system for three thousand bucks. So if I put it in like I have it today, this is five thousand bucks. That's four hundred dollars per TIB per day. Good, but not great. Uh, if we can get the system down to like thirty six hundred dollars a day. Uh, that's much better. So I think I'll look at some other configurations that use the DRAM um, and RAM disk plus a kind of lower end SSD and see if we can get something similar. Uh, but the problem with 128 gigabytes of DDR4, we can only run, run one RAM disk. And so you kind of can only run one at a time instead of two at a time like we just did with Plotman. So I'll have to think about what the best config is for the lowest price, but I, I'm sure that there'll be some sub $4,000 version of this machine that can do 12 to 13 TIB a day. So that was it. So I've owned the system for kind of less than a week. I'm very impressed with it. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. So first, my first AMD Threadripper. So thanks, guys. Bye-bye.